We humans are changing global climate. Concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are at their highest levels in more than 200,000 years. If the trend does not change, scientists expect the seas to rise two feet or more over the next century. Island chains such as the Maldives will disappear from the map unless we reverse the predictions. Thank you very much. The critics we've met question whether the global temperature is man-made or dangerous. They thereby question whether sea levels will rise as well. But if the United Nations climate panel predictions are correct, vast areas will be inundated. The low-lying Pacific Islands, populous countries like Bangladesh, and in particular the Maldives in the Indian Ocean, are doomed to extinction to catastrophic effect in terms of lives. <laughs> Professor Niels Axel Myrna of Stockholm University is on his way to the Maldives to conclude many years of studying sea levels around the archipelago. He is the president of an international commission on sea level changes and coastal evolution. And he and his team made a discovery shedding new light on the future of the Maldives. have something which sheds a completely new light on the future of sea level changes. It's a wonderful piece of evidence. It's really a skeleton which has been in Sweden for analysis and it tells a very important secret which we will decode here in the Maldives. I became very interested in the Maldives for one simple reason, because here you can study sea level changes and the various factors which interact to change sea level in a way which you can do in no other place on the globe. The IPCC report had a chapter on sea level changes. In their writing, they say that low-lying um, areas like the Maldives, specifying the Maldives, will be subjected to a future flooding. And they will disappear from the surface of the Earth within 50 years or at the most 100 years. These were, so to say, the baggage I came with. And then we began our research, not knowing what I would going to find. The first thing I found was a, a tree uh, in the Viligili. And then I heard from the people that this tree had been staying there in the same position for at least 50 years. This is quite a remarkable tree, because it has been in this terrible situation right out on the beach and any little change in sea level would have wiped it out and with this position right on the beach totally any minute so to say it could fall over over a big wave and it hasn't done that for 50 years that tells us a very important fact sea level can not be in the rising mode it can be stable or it could be a falling mode but certainly not in the rising mode, because then it would have wiped out that. And that is the message of the tree. Niels Axel Murner is on his way to the tiny island of Los Fushi with Musa Manik of EcoCare in the Maldives. They're carrying a piece of the skull of a skeleton that appeared from the coral reef there a few years ago. On the evidence of where the skeleton was found, and from carbon-14 dating, the sea level at the time the woman lived may now be reliably ascertained. Now we are coming out on this beach rock. Mm -hmm. A beach cemented into a hard rock. And um, outside there we see rocks sticking out. 
And that's the place where you found the woman. Yes. The woman. What actually uh, happened to us was that uh, uh, somewhere along the line, you know, a few years back, you know, we heard that you know there was a, a skeleton yes. uh, embedded in the in the shelf. So we came and asked the people there. Then a lot of elderly people had said that you know it had been there for a long time. Yeah. So we thought we would perhaps you know go and see that. And then uh, we wrote the article, and uh, you got the, the the article, you know. Precisely. We go around and see. That's, that's, right. a, good go that way, then, uh, that's a good the idea. The reef woman was embedded in a in a beach sand at about same sea level, and as today's sea level. And that was 1,200 years ago. That's the ribs, yeah. And here is the skull. So yeah. this one should have come here, I That's think. That's right. And because she has a very delicate yes. uh, cranium, mm. uh, we can be sure that it's a woman. Oh, so you were yes. completely correct. <laughs> because of its position in the reef, we can see that she lies embedded in the shore sand. And that shore sand is then uh, covered by a cemented uh, coral rubble which tells us other things that subsequently to that level 1200 years ago sea level rose brought this rubble together and cemented it then fell back in a couple of steps and those steps are quite remarkable in the last 200 years sea level has been about 30 centimeter higher than today at about 1970, something remarkably happened. Sea level fell down to its present position. And that f fall in sea level, which no one had expected to see, we can see all over the Maldives. It's very well recorded and established. And um, that, of course, gives us a completely different story than uh, it's generally uh, given. Here we are at the top of the present day wave action. They deposit these coral fragments and they are white because they are rounded by the waves of today. The other level, the gray level, is the top of the waves at the previous time. So that means a difference in height means evidence, real evidence that sea level has gone down. It has not gone up. So the sea level around the Maldives is not rising. On the contrary, there has been a remarkable fall of 20 to 30 centimeters in the last 30 years. The conclusion of Nicholas Myrna's observations may be that archipelagos like the Maldives will not be inundated after all. I think the reason for this fall in sea level about 1970-75 is a strongly increased evaporation. The Indian Ocean is very warm and the evaporation is exceptionally strong. And that strong evaporation has made the sea level in this region to be exceptionally low. So it's 30-40 centimeter lower than gravity tells it that it should be. And that's quite remarkable. I mean, it's going up so much uh, water vapor that it has not time to fill. Those things were, for me, exceptionally interesting variables to study. Evaporation from the oceans may actually ward off any future rises in sea level. Evaporation from the tropical oceans to the atmosphere moves the enormous volumes of water to other locations like the poles, where it falls as snow. A rise in evaporation 
is a course of becoming, uh, that it becomes warmer somewhere. That's interesting. And it means if it gets more evaporation here over the Indian Ocean, somewhere else it can get more precipitation. But you cannot have increased precipitation somewhere if you don't have increased ev evaporation somewhere else. And that is the balance of the globe.